Hey there, I'm Niall O'Reardon, and today I'm going to be changing the strings on a steel string acoustic. <laughs> As you can see, possibly, there's quite a bit of wear on these frets, but the guitar still plays great, so I don't see any need to get them dressed or replaced. I just keep them nicely polished as much as I can with this, which is a piece of a brace of rubber which is designed exactly for polishing frets you can also just use the gray end of a pencil eraser you know the one that's supposed to rub out ink i find that works just as well but this is great now i just do the same number of slides across on each fret say six up and six down just it takes the gunk off the frets But at the same time, you probably don't want to overdo it. I'm doing a number of frets at the same time because this is quite a long tool. Now you notice I did this after removing the uh, treatment because otherwise you're going to get that liquid all over this and it's going to mess up the abrasiveness of it. Okay, I think my, yeah, my Carnauba wax is nicely dried at this stage. So let's get that off. You gotta really buff this because it makes the guitar beautifully shiny and smooth, but if you don't take it off. The good thing is you can polish a guitar much more quickly than you can polish a car with this stuff. But you can polish your car as well if you got the time. All right, it is time to put on the new strings. Here's a brand new pack of strings which I bought maybe a year and a half ago in the expectation of gigging continuously and needing more strings but it's just today I'm going to need them because I've got a gig in Reardon's in Cork City this afternoon. So here's my six new shiny strings. Now these particular strings are colour coded and they're all in one pack but you see the ball ends are different colors so I just know this guy is the treble E string or the first string so what you do is you sink the string down into this hole as far as you like and you put the peg don't forget this notch in the peg matches up with the string so you stick the peg down and then you pull the string towards the peg like that and that's that's right if what you don't want happening which does happen quite a lot is when you pull the string back the ball end of the string lodges in behind the bottom of the peg pulling it out of the guitar with it you don't want that you want the string to come up like that behind the peg or in front of the peg whatever way and it sort of jams the in behind the peg that's the, the what that's what you're looking for if it pulls the peg out you just try again so stick this string down first then put the peg in after it then the second string done third string you'll notice i'm putting them all in to the bridge first uh, before actually stringing any of them up to the tuners that's just the way i do it The G string or the third string, and then the D. Yeah, everything is going beautifully so far. To string them onto the tuners, 
what I do, because there's a lot of tension on a six string steel guitar, as you can imagine. It's enough tension to bend the neck if you do it the wrong way. So what I'm doing is starting with the G string, the third string. Start with one of the middle ones, D or G, it doesn't really matter. You pull these other ones out of the way and you bring it up to the G tuner. Now, everyone has their own way of stringing the guitar. I personally just put it pretty much straight through here. Some people do knotting arrangements and then I don't, I don't really feel the need for it. You put it almost all the way through the hole, then keeping the tension on it with the finger, you get your string winder, or you can string it, you can wind it by hand. But the string winder is not only quicker, but it winds the string more evenly because it's a constant turn rather than doing it by hand where you have turn, turn, turn. This is just all the one turn. Now I'm not going to bring the string up to its full tension. Now you notice on this guitar and most steel string guitars, you bring it through the nut up to the, towards the middle of the headstock and then around this way. So it's winding around that way and the same from the middle and around this side as well. You don't want to wind them the other way because if you wind this string outside the tuner, it will end up rubbing off this string. It's, uh, plus it will put a sideways tension on the nut, which could crack the nut. So you keep them as central as possible. Bring it up to the center of the headstock, through the hole, and let's start winding. Now that's nowhere near a G, but I'm just winding them loose for the moment. So the next one we take is the fourth to the other side. Through the nut, and it's on. Now, don't forget to keep your finger on here because it keeps the string nice and low. And the string goes around the tuner and under this end bit. Now, if you've got another turn, which I don't, you can put this part of the string over this string, which does lock it better in tune, but this guitar holds its tune great, so I'm not gonna bother. And that's close enough. Okay, I'm gonna snap off these two ends. Tidy them immediately onto my existing loop so they don't get into the wrong hands or the wrong eyes. That's those tidied away. Okay, next. Let's go with the A, fifth string. Building the tension up slowly on the neck. You don't want to tune them all up to pitch as you're putting them on because you'll be putting rapidly increasing tension on the neck, which you don't want. And we do the B next, the second string. Then up towards the middle of the neck then out through the tuner, or the machine head, as we can call it. Now again, I'm going to snap these two guys off and put them on my bundle. And just to be crazy, I'm going to go with the treble E next. There's less tension on this string, so it'll increase the tension more slowly if I do the treble E first. And finally, the big daddy, the bass E string, the sixth string. Snapping those final two ends off. Snapping the ends off has a number of effects. Firstly, it makes the guitar look neater, because otherwise you've got six things hanging off at six different directions off the top of your guitar. Secondly, 
those things affect the sound so they're vibrating in uh, sympathy with the, with the music you're playing also if you move around they're all banging off each other making these horrible noises so looks better sounds better and you're not going to get the end of a string into your eye if you do this okay so I'm, i don't have perfect pitch so i'm just going to tune off this guitar which is tuned a semitone flat oh, i was there already now that d peg has popped out a bit just gonna push it back in Now I always start from the bass end of the guitar because as I say these strings have much higher tension on them than these strings. So if you start here on the treble string and then tune the next string and then the next heavier string and the heavier one again, by the time you get to the bottom this one will be gone way out of tune. So I start with the bass string and work my way downwards to the treble string that increases the tension less so it takes less tuning off the bass strings just a tip for and that pretty much applies to any guitar so i'm going to start again at the bass end and the old tech is ready to go Okay, so that's your guitar, strung, polished, lubricated, shiny, sounding great, ready for the gig. Now I hope this video was of some help to you. If it was, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button, it helps the channel a lot. Like, share, comment, whatever you like. Okay, I'm Nyla Reardon, it's been a pleasure, see you in the next video. Bye!